All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome into today's edition of In the Game. I am your host, Hustle. And as always, we're going to be diving into the markets and we're going to dive into exactly what the heck happened here on the Bitcoin chart. And honestly, I find this to be very, very bullish, in my opinion. We saw a fake tweet declining the ETF, apparently, uh, kind of like the Coin Telegraph situation that we saw. And the market reacted in such a negative way. There was so much liquidations, but this is clear market manipulation leading up to what everyone believes to be the ETF approval. And gaming altcoins are reacting very well. And I think there's lots of opportunities. And by the way, I'm going to go over some lower cap coins today. You guys ask for it all the time. You guys want the low caps. And I got about six or seven I'm going to share today that I do think have a lot of upside heading into the next cycle. So without further ado, let's jump in the game. All right. And as always, guys, drop down, like the video and subscribe for more every single day and week here on In The Game, one of the biggest crypto gaming channels on YouTube as well. Shout out to our sponsors here on In The Game. We have some amazing sponsors. We have Seedify, Amino Rewards, Ultra, Vulcan Forge, Redato, Dreams Quest, XCAD Network, Organia, and Owned.gg. Everyone's doing some amazing things. You can check those out down below in the description as well as our exchange partners. Now, if you were trading leverage, longs earlier this week than you were affected here. But if you're looking for somewhere to trade, all of our exchange partners are down below in the description. So as mentioned, um, we saw this scam wick. We, we call them scam wicks in crypto. And these things happen. And there's fake news that comes out, which the fake news was a very small account under a thousand followers. This is why the market is so infant still. Under a thousand followers, they tweet that the Bitcoin ETF has been declined. And that was not true. But we went from 45, which was basically we were we were trending up from this point. Like we we took a dip to like 44.8. We got up to 45, mid 45s. And then this news came out and we got completely scam wicked all the way down the wick hit, you know, 48. Uh, so 40,800, and now we've bounced back up to 44K, so a 10% increase since this little wick here, and this is bullish in my opinion. If the market's willing to react that uh, vulnerably, I would say, to the decline fake news, then I think that the market is going to react very euphorically whenever we actually see that official grayscale Bitcoin ETF or whatever the case, you know, the BlackRock ETF. We, we see it, you know, all of a sudden it's approved the spot ETF for the first time. I think that the reaction that we're going to get to the upside here is going to be pretty severe. And I mean, gaming coins have been taking a nice trend up. If we just take a look at the watch list here, 24 hours, uh, Creo, this thing's crazy. Uh, I mean, this thing is up only at this point in time. It's up 44% over the 24 hours. Beam, a high market cap coin a billion dollar market cap circulating this thing right here 36 percent on the 24 hours jewel is making a nice run 28 percent mythos behind mythical games up 27 percent so the market's reacting pretty well uh, we see playable taking a nice little jump winter protocols green for the day Kaneko's green for the day and um it, it makes sense like these things got hit hard and altcoins Bitcoin sold off, but people got scared. They sold some altcoins. They wanted like liquidity. They wanted, oh, it's over. It's declined. But that just shows you where we are in this market right now, guys. And, you know, don't trust any sources other than the official sources at this point in time. Like, don't don't go out there and just look at the fake news and get shaken out of your positions. I'll, I'll pull up a tweet here. I don't want the, um, I don't want to lag too much here. So, uh, once I'll, I'll pull it up here in just a second, though, uh, a couple of news bits, a uh, Futureverse dropped something huge today. So Futureverse is behind, um, fluff world. They have so many things on their root network. The root network is their project, their chain, their token, etc. Um, and we couldn't be more excited that we've teamed up with ready player one creator and producer to launch the Readyverse studios to bring leading IP and brands to the metaverse. It's a first of its kind studio, uh, with their co-founders as well as Ernest Klein, the best-selling novelist and renowned creator of Ready Player One. And 
if you live under a rock, you don't know what Ready Player One is. They popularized the metaverse in modern times. Before Facebook became meta, the movie Ready Player One was out there, and it showed you what the metaverse can be. So this is huge news. I mean, huge IP coming into the metaverse space. And um, if you don't follow Futureverse, I, and I don't follow them on Twitter, but I follow the project. But nonetheless, they've done some really cool things in the space. And I think that uh, based on what I've seen and some of the people that I know involved, uh, this one's definitely one to look out for. And uh, the Root Network token, it didn't really take a spike uh, to the upside too much after this news. So uh, maybe take a look at that if this is something that is up your alley. And then this is something, um, you know, Becker tweeted that I, I really like. So Becker um he probably gets asked the same things as me, and which is, where do I buy gaming coins? Like, they're not on Coinbase, they're not on Binance, et cetera. And Becker says he's looking at taking a major stake in a new exchange coming soon. Um, it would be the exchange for gaming cryptos, as he sees a lot of his followers locked out of the game crypto because they can't get access to certain coins, which a large stake in the exchange, we could easily push to get the best game coins listed with more speed and liquidity than anywhere else, allowing way more people to access gaming crypto. This could be big. I know in the comments all the time, where do I buy this token? I live in the US and exchanges don't have this token. Now, I'll tell you, I live on decentralized exchanges. I don't buy tokens on centralized exchanges. So this wouldn't really change the game for me. But for the typical investor, this definitely could. So this is something to definitely look out for. And as mentioned, we're seeing a bounce in this market right now. The daily chart here is very bullish on Beam, and it makes sense. Uh, look at these number counts. This is uh, Marco from Merit Circle. Look at this right here, the number of daily transactions for the Beam subnets. And they're hitting all-time highs on the Beam subnet transactions. Yesterday, they had 103,000 transactions. That's wild. Uh, that's wild. And there are games operating on the subnet. There are multiple things going on, but that is some really good activity. Uh, and in my opinion, it, it's it's going to be eventually on par with stuff like an IMX, with stuff like uh, a Ronin, for example. I think that this is definitely claiming its stake in that conversation. And then another one we, we said was due for a bounce was uh, Kaneko, the casino project underneath Solana. This one's definitely bounced over the week time period, a nice 20% from the uh, local uh, bottom. Now, we called this one around 45 cents, and this one's done really well. But uh, I think this one will continue. Solana's still hot. Projects like Honeyland, another one we called around six cents. Uh, this one... It, it just took a little bit of a dip. It was back above that 25 cent level. Uh, but this one's been absolutely crushing. And I agree with the altcoinist here uh, that 40% from the top was a gift for the new year uh, because we'll go much higher. I agree. I think Honeyland's definitely got more uh, to come. And then some altcoins that are a little uh, hi either higher market cap or we've already got positions in that I'm definitely looking to maybe stack up more of or make another move. Superverse has been very explosive over the last like two, three months. I mean, this chart is pretty crazy. But if you actually take a look, we got up to 71 cents. We got back up to 70 cents. These dips have been getting bought up consistently. I think that Super, the announcements are about to start ramping up. And I'm going to tell you this. I've spoke with Elio about what's to come. It's going to surprise a lot of people the direction that the super token is going because it's going to be integrated into a lot of different pillars of the gaming landscape in Web3. And I think it's going to really open some eyes whenever that happens. So I think super is a really good accumulation. I think winner protocols are really good accumulation as well. They're already on Arbitrum the lead casino on Arbitrum, and now they're about to be a new casino project on Solana. We know Solana has been super hot. That is the network that they are going Ultra. They're going to be running a lot of game tournaments on the Ultra Arena, about $650 in prizes this month across games like Clash Royale, Apex Legends, EV.io, League of Legends. So go check that out. And then also, last but not least, Vulcan Forged. Uh, they see the card game niche exploding, you know, with stuff like Parallel, Gods Unchained, Splinterlands, etc. And uh, they're looking to stake their claim in that niche. 178,000 daily active users. 
less than 1% of Web2 card games, but with Berserk Games, they're targeting both. With social logins, tutorials, and easy onboarding, Season 5 of Berserk is going to go live here soon. Um, so definitely check out all of our sponsors, Ultra, Vulcan Forge, and Redato down below in the descriptions. Now, I agree with uh, Jesus Martinez here, formerly Classy Crypto, that after the fake news we just saw, after that dip, that created a lot of opportunities across the market to potentially DCA, add to your positions. And I think it's going to be a huge month for crypto gaming. And he says he's scouting out Illumia, Storm Warfare, Playable, and Ronin. Um, as mentioned on the last show, I think Playable Games is primed for another leg up if we see a Bitcoin ETF approval or just this market continue to climb with the speculation of approval. I'm very bullish on Ronin. Um, Storm Warfare looks good, and Illumia has been gaming, gaining a lot of hype in this market as well. But more so, I'm very on board with his first statement. I'm fairly certain we're going to have another explosion similar to October, November in this month for crypto gaming. So where can we be looking across this market? There's a lot of options, okay? Like, I think Beam is, is going to continue to crush it. I think when you look at stuff, uh, you know, the root network would be interesting. Uh, because of this Ready Player One news, but after news, it's never really the good time to buy. So maybe wait on that one. Um, there's some games on this list that have been picking up some steam. And um, if I'm going to go, you know, on the 24 hours and just see what's maybe taken a little bit of a hit, you know, Altura's down for the 24 hours. Crown Photo Finish game, uh, one of the best games on Solana alongside Honeyland, they're down. Uh, two percent on the twenty-four hours and ten percent for the week. I think there's some really good buys across the market, but I know what you guys are looking for. You guys in the chat and in the comment section always want the low caps. Okay, so we're gonna go over some mid to low cap tokens. Not an exclusive list, and there's definitely some micro caps that I'm scouting. But if if I give those on YouTube. It, they're just going to pump for no reason. So I'm not going to do that at this point in time. So we're going to go over some solid projects in that, you know, mid to low cap range uh, and be responsible to the audience. Because what people have to understand is I, I come across a lot of coins, 2 million market cap. And we've given you some in the past. We gave you Senate at 2 million. It's now 24 million. Like we've gone over these things in the past. But the one thing in this type of a market where people are just aping everything they see, we have a responsibility to the audience to make sure that nobody gets wrecked in these markets and these low caps move way too fast. Like if you get in early, yes, you can make a killing, but the exits are also very rapid and they, they, they're very volatile. Okay. So we always do our best to protect the audience here. And uh, we're always going to do that. But uh, no particular order here. Cypher. Now, this one, it was a last cycle token launched at the end of the last cycle. But it hasn't really seen a proper bull. It, it launched after the top of Bitcoin. And they have been building rapidly uh, in this market. And right now, they are actually getting the game in the hands of a bunch of content creators. And Cypher has been picking up a lot of momentum. It's up 40% over the seven days. It's doubled in the last month. I think that this one at a 50 mil market cap has a lot of potential. And Cypher has a lot of funding to play with. Like They, they really have done well navigating the bear especially at the point in time that they launched. And I think that Cypher definitely warrants being on people's watch list. Next one up, Shrapnel, 70 mil. So it's not as low cap, uh, but at the same time, it's hard to ignore the catalysts. Uh, the game will be launching here very soon. And I think we're going to see a parallel slash big time type of price movement here on Shrapnel. Unix, Unix at an $11 million market cap. Uh, this one also launched at the back end of the last cycle. Hasn't seen a proper bull. Like, let's look at the all-time chart here. It literally launched at the top of Bitcoin, okay? At the Pico top. Now, it's not the project's fault that they launch at those times of the market. What they have done is navigate very well with their funding, and they're really revamping the Unix platform to integrate with Owned. Shout out to one of our sponsors, Owned.gg. 
and um, they just bridged over to Avalanche. I think they're going to maybe do their own subnet, and we're going to see the Unix product really ramp up uh, in the coming months. So I'm looking at Unix, $11 million and 30 mil circulating. I think that Unix is a really good play for appreciation over the course of 2024. Decimated. Decimated, one of the most loyal communities, one of the best looking games that's unreleased on Solana. Once I get my hands on this thing, I'll be able to give you even more of an opinion. But uh, this one here, I think DIO can really crush it. $24 million market cap on Solana. We all know the narrative there. So Decimated is one we've been a big fan of for a long time. And I think that that's one you need to have on your radar. Wombat. This might be one you haven't taken a look at yet. So Wombat acquired Wazder. And Wombat, they, they have a really good portfolio of products, uh, a good user base, $56 million fully diluted, $20 million circulating. I think that this one definitely has a lot of growth potential. And they're now capturing, they're capturing that audience that Wazder had. Like, I think that both are good plays, but I'm looking at Wombat in particular. Uh, to potentially, I don't know, th this one I, at 20 million, this could really, really uh, do some good numbers alongside Unix. Like, I think Unix could 10x from here personally, and that, that would not surprise me. And I'm always going to be conservative. And you guys know that I'm never going to come in here and tell you this is a 100x coin or th this coin is going to thousand X this year. That's just not my MO because we like to be realistic and we do, if it over exceeds expectations, perfect. We all make money, right? Uh, so I think Unix can safely 10 X get back to a hundred million market cap uh, during the next full cycle. I think like something like Wombat could probably five to 10 X as well. Like I, I genuinely do. So I'll be looking for that. Compete. Compete might be the biggest gem on this list. The reason I'm saying that it could be the biggest gem on this list is it's probably and no shade to other products. Uh, Shrapnel looks fantastic. Decimated looks great. Compete is also top tier, but you can play it right now. You can go jump into it. And this one's just so under the radar. Like this just is not on too many people's lists. And I think this is being overlooked like crazy. Um, I mean, it's it's only on 13,000 watch lists and definitely way less holders than that. 25 million, 34 million uh, fully diluted. I think that complete uh, Compete is a sleeping giant in this market and one you definitely want to have on your radar, on your watch list, and potentially a part of your portfolio heading into the next cycle. This is one that's really gained in steam over the last few months, uh, and this is Lit Labs. So Lit had a pretty good run, but now it's taken a big retrace. So it's done 300% this year. But if you look from $0.05 cents down back to $0.03, cents, it's almost a 50% retrace from its uh, top here around the beginning of December. And I mean, it's it's been getting beat up. It's down 30% for the month. Uh, this one had a 10 mil market cap. Now, the circulating's a little high, but the unlocks, they're not too heavy in the short term. So I think that Lit Labs has a lot of potential to continue its growth as well. And, you know, out of respect... This is not one I'm chasing, but Creo, this one's been crushing, $40 million market cap. The sentiment on social media on this one is freaking out of this world. In the comment section here, everyone loves this project. It's been giving me early GFAL vibes a little bit, and GFAL did really well uh, whenever it was on its run, and it was really popular, and everyone seemed to be talking about it. Right now, that project seems to be Creo. But it's just ran. It's just ran so much. This is the highest risk on the list because of how much it's already pumped. So this is that. That's why it's last. It's kind of like an honorable mention because it's almost working its way out of of low cap territory, right? So definitely, like the product isn't high risk. The risk you're taking by jumping in now versus what it's done already that's the risk so this is definitely honorable mention but in the gaming side cypher shrapnel unix decimated wombat compete lit labs i think those are really good plays to be completely honest and then gamblefy uh, i'm looking at virtue poker because this one's still 2x undervalued of winner 
This one is about 10x undervalued of uh, blockchain bets market cap. And it's about 100x undervalued versus something like Rollbit. Now, it's not going to quite ever hit that Rollbit valuation, but I think you could see a 10x from this in the next cycle, 100%. They have lots of tournaments going on, social activations, user growth. So as far as low cap gambling platforms, this is definitely one I'm keeping my eye on. And it's the lowest market cap token that I'm going to give today. Five mil for now in this market. That's definitely the lowest I will uh, I will be talking about on this list. So th those are the low caps right now. I I'm kind of eyeing up. Cypher, Shrapnel, Unix, Decimated, Wombat, Compete, Lit Labs, and Virtue Poker. There's a lot more. I mean, we could definitely just filter this watch list. And like I said, it's not an exclusive list. I think Senate has so much more in the tank with the Citus pad. Uh, I think that Gamey, I know they're doing some huge things over at Animoca to make Gamey like a real focal point. That one could have a lot of potential. Katana Inu. I mean, yeah. Hang on. Let me, let me pull this one up. Let's see. We'll get Katana Inu up here on the screen because this is definitely one. Add this to the list. I mean, Kata, they've been absolutely crushing um, on their developments on the back end. And honestly, like over the over the month, like or over the year, it's done really well. But over the month, it's been getting kind of hit. And um, since it's local top here at 0 0.0017, it's about a 33% decrease, $27 million market cap. They have top tier partners. They have top tier graphics. Everything that they're doing really makes me bullish. So um, add Kata to that list for sure. And that's why like, there's so many quality low caps out there uh, that we could isolate, right? Um, I'm not a huge fan, but PZP could have uh, a lot more left in the tank. I think that something like... Um, I mean, Game Starter has some good momentum recently. Cornucopius, uh, you know, it's a little higher. It's closer to that shrapnel market cap. That's definitely one you could be eyeing up. Dubs, of course, $40 million market cap, and it's fully diluted. So that's one to take a look at. I think Grape, um, Grape just launched. It's gotten a lot of sell pressure from TGE and airdrops. But once this one finds its bottom, I think it could potentially have a very nice run. We still have Kaneko winner underneath those $20 million market caps. So uh, Amora Games might have a lot of potential. There's some really good projects on this list that we could go over for days. But those are some low caps I'm eyeing. Now, the biggest disclaimer I have to say with low market cap tokens, you can make the most, but you can potentially lose the most. Like there's a, something to be said about when you invest in an avalanche or a soul or a Bitcoin or a beam or an IMX, the downside risk isn't as heavy as something like a low cap. The low caps could sell off. There's less liquidity. There's less volume. The manipulation could be higher. But one thing I'll say is I've made the most gains in my time in crypto by getting in early on things that are lower market cap. So we will continue to bring you low market cap tokens, but just always have that caveat that, you know, they can dump as fast as they can pump. And um, those should definitely be a smaller percentage of your overall portfolio based on your risk tolerance. If you're just a complete degen and you want to just have a low cap portfolio and just ride it to the moon, that's on you. But I like the mix of high market caps, low market caps, middle market caps, and really balanced out my portfolio to maximize upside, but also protect my downside, right? So as always, like the video, subscribe for more. We're always going to be bringing you the biggest gems, the alpha, what's coming around the corner and what is coming around the corner. Uh, Army of Fortune. They're crushing it. A million downloads on their mobile app. I got the mobile app on my phone as well. I've been playing. It's super fun. I'm really excited about the token launch that's coming up around the corner. You can get involved by owning an NFT. And um, I don't know if they're going to do a pre-sale. Pre-sales have been pretty hot. So maybe keep your eyes on that. But a million downloads. Uh, and they, they got up to 500,000 players recently. Like, I'm very bullish that these are former Supercell uh, devs, and I think that this is definitely one to have on your radar for the coming month as their TGE should be around the corner here in Q1. Another one with an upcoming token and node sale, Meta X Seed Games. This is a you know full-blown platform, kind of like a Myria or a Gala, like Meta X Seed. They're about to have their node sale. They're about to really ramp things up on the marketing side. So this one's definitely early. 
Um, so, and here's the thing we've given a lot of gems before they launch here. So note these down. These are definitely ones you want to take a look at and maybe get involved with. So we have army of fortune. We have meta X seed games. We have something like age of dino. Now, why is age of dino getting all this hype? Well, they're doing a token airdrop. So as you see here, did you know you can get an AOD airdrop simply by participating in the dinos DPFP bidding place a bid and you'll get the airdrop. If you own the NFTs, you're going to get an airdrop. So this is being incubated by Xterio. Who did they incubate recently that did really well? Overworld, as you see, Xterio. They have their token airdrop in Q1, their token presale this month. These are sitting above 2 ETH, I think, right now. Um, and they were minting at 0.15, so over a 10x. So that's why I'm looking at Age of Dino. I think it's going to do really well. And um, the game looks pretty cool. I have to say the game looks pretty cool for uh, like a mobile interface and the AOD airdrop. And uh, obviously with Overworld, the MNCT presale, I think those are some of the biggest events coming up in the short term that you should have on your radar. So as mentioned, we're always going to bring you the opportunities. We're always going to give you the gems. And hopefully we're all going to be raking in the gains together throughout this cycle Last message I want to portray on this show. One second. Let me get my profile because I said I'd show this. I said I would show this tweet. Here it is. Scam wicks, fake news, and paper hands. Just another day in crypto. But we're at the cusp of a generational shift and you're going to sell? Couldn't be me. I'm holding. I'm accumulating quality projects heading into this generational shift where everyone's going to be able to potentially have access to something like a Bitcoin ETF, learn more about the industry. And guess what? With education and with that learning curve comes them diving into the weeds of the ecosystem. We all know. We all started with Bitcoin. We trickled into the top alts. And then you get into those dirty lower cap alts and uh, – we, we want to transfer more users from the traditional system to Web3. So I think that ETF could be the perfect bridge to do so. But this is me to all the sellers. All right. I'm accumulating. I'm holding. I'll take profits accordingly. But I am riding this wave up for 24-25. As always, guys, I'll see you all on the next one. Like, subscribe. As always, play well, my friends.